Can you walk us through just incredibly how arduous this has to have been for you leading up until the Super Bowl and you're embedded with both teams and you don't know who's going to win and suddenly there's a winner, there's a champion, and now you've got to go deadline. How do you do it? Well, uh, I can start by saying it's always my favorite and least favorite story of the year, if that makes sense. You know, basically, we have to be ready either way. I like to be ready for wh- whoever plays well in the game. I uh, want to be able to sort of uh, tell the story of their season, tell the story of their individual background and how they arrived there, and then ideally be able to stitch it all together. That generally means in the neighborhood of 100 interviews or so. I do it usually with another writer. This year I did it with uh, Connor Orr. Really had an amazing couple weeks, and uh, you know, then we we get ready for any scenario that might happen. So that's Aaron Donald, that's Von Miller, that's Matthew Stafford, that's Les Snead, that's Sean McVay, and in this instance, it was kind of rare. They uh, they all factored so prominently into the win that we ended up writing a ton. I usually start writing about um, 3 a.m. Eastern, and I usually file by 8 a.m. And so, those are the most frenetic you know hours of my existence for every year. And uh, at the end, I have no idea whether the story is good or not. But uh, usually we finish, which is a good thing. How do you get so in-depth? How do you write when you weren't in these particular situations? Like, for instance, the evening of January 30th, you write about the Staffords and the Whitworths in Cabo. They just happen to be there at the same time. You write like you're there. How do you do that? Yeah, I think it's a product of speaking to as many people who were there as possible. You know, I'm really looking for, you know, direct eyewitnesses, for lack of a better term. And, you know, when writing about the Rams trip to Cabo, it starts out by talking to some of the wives who were in attendance, whether it was Melissa Whitworth or Sean McKay's girlfriend, Veronica. Um, Then it's like I find out from them that Clint Bowling is the one that connected Whitworth and Stafford, that this was all set in motion by, of all people, they've former Bengal who had played with Matthew in college and with Andrew in the pros. And then I take that information and I say, I need to talk to bowling. So I get him on the phone, make sure that he confirms it, add additional detail. And then the other interviews begin to roll in, you know? So then you talk to Matthew Stafford, you talk to Sean McVay and you're getting their impressions of the night. And then they have these FaceTime calls, you know, after they've decided that the, that the move's going to be made, they've made the trade for Matthew Stafford and they're calling Cooper cup. They're calling Aaron Donald. They're calling the executives who helped shape the deal back in Los Angeles. And so you want the other side of those phone conversations as well. So when I end up writing a section on Cabo and the trip that changed this NFL season, I have it from 15 to 20 different vantage points. And it's the level of detail those people provide that hopefully makes the story, you know, kind of feel that way. And you mentioned that you had thousands of words on Eric Weddle and you have to whittle it down to a paragraph how do you decide what's important? How do you decide what's going to stay on the in the computer or on the floor? Yeah, that's always the hardest part. You know, I think when I dropped everything I had pre-written, whether it was for stories that ran online or for stuff I call pre-writing, you know, just sort of to have into the file with that and interviews and research at about midnight last Sunday, I had about 77,000 words. Ooh. It ended up running wow. about 8,500. And uh, that that was a task I probably should not have given myself. It was very, very difficult to cut it down. The first 50,000 are pretty easy. The next 10,000 are get you close. And then we're agonizing every over every single word. And so I'm weighing things like what can I use later? You know, who would be a good story down the road? Who might make for a good magazine story in our next issue? Because we can't publish the Super Bowl game story in the issue because of the lag time between close and print. But we do do a special commemorative issue that's just about the Rams. So I may have something on one of the players in the next issue. I'm I'm looking at how do these things relate to each other. I'm trying to consider the time of the people that want to read this thing and how far they're going to make it in the story. And then, you know, you just make a lot of painful cuts, cuts that still hurt, you know, four days later, stuff I wish was in the world but just didn't quite fit. Yeah, like what? I'd love to know what that cut is that you're wishing that you could have included in, in the piece for SI. You know, uh, I ended up writing 4,300 words on Matthew Stafford, and he was a big part of the game. But because I wanted to fit in Von Miller telling Sean McVay, come get me at a nightclub in 2018, and I wanted to fit in 
Weddle playing pickup basketball games to try to get his pro athlete fix. And I wanted to fit in Beckham insisting on number three and having to negotiate with Cam Akers in order to come over. You know, that I ended up using maybe a thousand words of Stafford when I would have liked to have used more. You know, there was a one story that I really loved where he's at dinner with a couple Lions teammates and he doesn't know what American Express points are. And they're all kind of laughing at just how normal he is. You know, this is not a guy that seems like a star quarterback. He doesn't even know that he has American Express points. And they have him look it up on his app how many he has. And it turns out he has two million. <laughs> he's just like sitting there <laughs> on you because that's like not something that he had thought through. And I had all these cool stories about just how normal Matthew Stafford is, whether he's wearing a hoodie to Nobu or, you know, um, taking his linemen, you know, on different trips and, you know, how he would go on vacation every year when the Super Bowl happened because he was never playing in it. And, you know, I, I imagine you'll see a Matthew Stafford, you know, focus story in Sports Illustrated at some point and not too long from, you know, from now. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here.